Hey, how you doing? Justin here. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the A minor pentatonic scale. I'm sure some of you have heard the term minor pentatonic scale. It's uh, most commonly used for blues improvising, which is what we're going to be getting into in the next lesson. So I want to give you a bit of a head start of playing the scale up and down. The idea of playing a scale and improvising within a scale should be already familiar to you because we've looked at the C major scale already in this course. You've had to go at improvising. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Blues improvising is a little different in that we end up using these things called licks, which are short little phrases that we use, but the licks are usually coming from the minor pentatonic scale, at least as a starting point. It feels a little different and we're going to be playing it further up the neck, so that it's going to present a few other difficulties. Well, not difficulties, it's just going to feel a little different to be playing further up the neck like that. It's not very difficult, it's got two notes on every string. There's a little clue in the name here, the pentatonic scale, penta five to five note scale. In the key of A, we've got A, C, D, E, G, and then it's back to A. Of course, we've got kind of 12 tones that we're playing because we've got two notes on each string and six strings, but it is actually only five notes before the cycle repeats itself. We're gonna be playing with the first finger starting in the fifth fret of the thickest string. Now that is the note A, and that is the root note. And just like power chords, the minor pentatonic scale can be played up and down the neck and it will be in a different key. If we moved it down to the third fret, it would be G minor pentatonic. If we moved it all the way up to the 10th fret, it would be D minor pentatonic scale. But I would recommend to start off with just practicing it in the key of A. Let's have a go. So let me just play it for you once up and down, first of all, so you can see the whole thing. <laughs> So we're starting here with the first finger on the fifth fret of the thicker string, then little finger goes down in the eighth fret on the same string. I'd recommend just using all down picks while you're learning the shape, and then we'll talk about alternate picking in just a sec. Then we've got first finger, fifth fret, third finger, seventh fret on the fifth string. Exactly the same pattern on the fourth string, so first finger and third finger on the fifth and seventh fret respectively. Same pattern again on the third string. First finger, third finger, fifth fret and seventh fret. Now on the second string, first finger, little finger. Okay, little finger's going down the eighth fret and the same pattern now on the thinner string. We don't play the top note twice generally, so we'd go straight back down to the first finger. Then we'd have eighth fret to fifth fret on the second string. Seventh fret, fifth fret on the third string. Seventh fret, fifth fret on the fourth string, same again on the fifth string, little finger on the eighth fret to first finger on the thickest string. So first step, try and remember that it's first finger, little finger, then it's just these two frets apart all of the way up to the second string where they're separated again. So you're using a little finger there on the thinnest two strings. Now, probably the best approach when you're first learning a scale is using all down picks so you can concentrate on the geometric shape that the scale makes, the box. This is often called box one of the minor pentatonic. I call it pattern one. Some people call it box one, some people call it position one. Doesn't matter, it's the same thing. So the first thing you wanna look at is the shape and it does make kind of a box. You see the first finger is playing all those notes and you've got little finger on the thinnest two strings, third finger, on the next three, the little finger down there on the end. So you can kind of see that it makes a box shape. Once you can play the scale and you've got it to memory, then you might want to start thinking about doing alternate picking. The easiest way to think of alternate picking here with this scale shape is that you're going to use a down pick on the notes with the first finger and an up pick on all of the others. So we'd have down pick, up, down, 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 up, down. And you could just repeat that around. Key things here with the scales. 
remember to do it slowly. Much better to be slow and accurate than it is to be fast and making mistakes. Because every time you make a mistake, you have to do it like a hundred times to reprogram your brain to do it the right way. It's a really, really important part of learning scales, arpeggios, any of these kind of complicated geometric shapes, you want to be doing them slow enough to train your brain to be doing it exactly right. Don't risk doing it the wrong way. Really, really, really important. Okay, probably the most important thing about learning scales, is making sure you get that right. I would recommend, that's partly why I say, just do it with the down picks first of all, to get that shape right. Then you can start exploring it with the alternate picking. You can play it with a metronome if you like, you, or you can just concentrate on actually making sure the tempo is as consistent as you can make it. Try not to be stop starty. Try and get do, 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 do. Try and keep that rhythm nice and even, as even as you can, even if that means slow. Much better again to be having a slow, even rhythm than playing some bits faster than others. There's one other thing that I want to mention to you, which you know, it might be slightly controversial. It's to do with the fingering of the scale. And when I learned it, it was the fingering I just showed you. And that's a good starting point. But as soon as you actually get into playing any blues or rock, there's a thing that you're going to encounter called a string bend, which is where you kind of push the string up with your fingers to change the pitch. It's a very unique guitar thing, very common in blues and rock. It's this kind of... So you can see I'm pushing the string and I can make it sound a different... It's a really, really common thing, this string bending, especially in blues. So one thing that you might want to explore, even at this early stages, is using the third finger on the thinnest two strings as well, which it's going to seem like, well, that doesn't seem like a very good idea. It means I'm stretching out my fingers funny. But actually, in reality, it's probably what you're going to end up doing more often than not, especially when you're playing blues. So you might want to check out this fingering as well. So going first finger, little finger still on the thicker string. Then first finger, third finger. And when you get to the second string, first finger, third finger. Now, can you see my fingers have suddenly got on an angle? So even if they're a bit squarer here, as soon as I've gone like this, my hand's turned at an angle. Because doing it straight like that, that's, that's awkward. Even for me, I've got decent stretch, that's awkward. This is comfy. And now you can see that the fingers are slow straightening up. Here they go, look, they're starting to angle. And that's because most of this string bending you want to be starting with the fingers angled. You don't do it like this. That's bad technique for bending. So you can see just from these little examples how that the third finger is spending a lot of time there up on the eighth fret. And I kind of wish that my teachers had shown me that way, which is a little bit more practical, a little bit more useful. A little bit controversial because if you do want to play a scale just straight up and down and you want to play a scale fast, then little finger is definitely a better option. But we don't go and watch people who are great scale players. And if I went to see John Mayer and go, oh man, he plays that A minor pentatonic so good. That never happened, right? It's just about the music that's made. And to make music, the finger doesn't always apply in a logical fashion that you might expect. So I would recommend at least having a bit of an explore of using the third finger on that. We're not going to be covering uh, string bending until after the beginner's course, but something that you might find helpful to start practicing now in preparation for that. So again, minor pentatonic will be in your practice routine. I'd recommend that you just practice it up and down and work on the alternate picking for now, and we're going to put it into practice in the very next lesson. If you happen to be over on YouTube, I really appreciate you slapping that subscribe button and a like maybe as well. Hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when I'm going live. If you've got any questions about this lesson, the best place to ask them is over on the website in the comment section. I check in and answer as many questions as I can, as often as I can. Really hope you're enjoying the course so far. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Bye-bye.